Welcome to the second part of my series, where I, a casual and cool gamer, review the Witcher games one by one. Even though everyone watching this has probably already played these games by now. I mean, this game is as old as Skyrim. This episode is all about the second game, aka the Assassins of Kings, which is about Assassins of Kings. <laughs> this game is great. And I'm going to tell you why. At the beginning of the game, you're being questioned about a certain oopsie you were framed for doing, assassinating a king. Hence, the, the, the title right here. This was done by a different guy who assassinated a different king before. This assassin is also a witcher, and one of my favorite characters from the entire game. Mm -hmm. Who's my favorite character, I hear you asking? You're trying to figure out who's behind these assassinations, and Trissa here is trying to help. But give it to someone you love, and it'll live forever. Here, my queen. This one's for you. Oh, Geralt. After you escape prison, you also awkwardly reunite with your boys along the way. You remember the boys, Dandelion and the Dwarf. The story takes you to interesting locations filled with drunks, blacksmiths, Triss, soldier buddies, skeletons, witchers, the Skratel, dragons, Triss, ballistas, Nilfgaardians, and Triss again. There's a lot more politics and maneuvering in this game than in the first one. Geralt feels way more important as well as his decisions and isn't just an emotionless monster hunter, but a guy trying to uncover and remember his past while writing his own destiny. Also, your decisions can get you killed really unexpectedly and really f***ing quickly. Pay a fine. Nothing doing. Kill the bastard! The story has two unique paths you choose from at some point. You can choose a path with Big Giga Chatburn and Roach, or this elf. So it's definitely worth playing the game twice. I don't want to get into much debt or spoilers, but the story was fun, well thought out, and sets up tons of stuff for the next game. Previously mentioned decisions you make create a lot of different variations of situations and dialogues you can experience. So this is a big plus, especially for me. <laughs> Same as the first game, the story itself is divided into chapters. There's a prologue, three chapters, and then an epilogue. The epilogue in the first game was longer and had two potential boss fights. The epilogue in this game is really short and consists of one boss fight that doesn't even have to happen if you decide to just not fight. Also, the previous game had two more chapters than this one. The chapters themselves are packed with tons of quests though, especially the second chapter. What do you want? Normally I only talk to drunks. But it still felt like something was missing, in comparison with, in my opinion, more packed content in the first game. It'd be plowing hard to move. We'd never shift it in one piece. I know. We'll break off the legs, the heads. I enjoyed each chapter though. That being said, fuck the dragon and fuck Hanselt. He dead. <laughs> this game is definitely a step up from the last one, and it shows. I didn't really mind the combat system from the first game, but the one here is much better. It's fun and engaging, and you're more invested in the fight, and it just feels more natural. In the last game, I was also mad because I couldn't jump. Cue the clip. One thing I wasn't used to is that Geralt can't jump. He just walks, and when I want to jump, I pause the entire game. Come on. Damn it. Can you jump in this game though? No. But you can roll around. Witcher. 
coward. At the fore and fierce in many battles. But a human's one thing. A spectre's another. No other way to put this. I shit myself. <laughs> what was added to this game were more intense boss fights. I'm getting absolutely annihilated. Not just your standard stronger enemies, but actual unique epic bosses for every chapter. Which I obviously suck at killing, and I died a lot. What also made the game a bit more interesting were short parts where you play as someone else than Geralt. This made the story more engaging and was a fun addition. A step down, which is only in this game out of the three, is that you can drink potions mid-fight and you have to do it before, but that's dumb sometimes since you don't know, especially on your first playthrough, where and when you'll be fighting. The fact that you can meditate anywhere and you don't need to find a fireplace is great. The perks feel like they make a change and I went pretty much the same build as I did the first game which was the I hack you to pieces with my sword build. There's a lot of fun perks to get, and for my build in particular, the chance to insta-kill enemies was a must-have. Unlike the first game, there weren't many romances you could have in this one. Am I disappointed about that? Yes. But where it lacks in quantity, it makes up in quality. Looks like we're stuck. Mm -hmm. well, there must be another way out of here. Mm -hmm. Why are you looking at me that way? Do I have something on my face? Uh -uh. What's going on in that head of yours, Witcher? This point is obviously important for the game and my rating overall. Also, this game has a ton of difficulties, one of which is insane. And once you die in this one, all of the saves you had up until then are disabled, which is insane. And I'm probably too casual to enjoy that. But maybe I'll try it someday. Who knows? Epic gameplay at its finest. I had no idea it'd be so big. That's what she said! <laughs> Triss was right. It's mutated. Magically induced. Which, uh... I found two guys with the same name. What the f***? Actually, I'm here because of your weapon expertise. As I said before, the game was great for me. I enjoyed the story, Triss, the quests, and the gameplay overall. It's in this game too. As was mentioned though, the game felt a bit short, especially the epilogue, which was essentially just one dialogue and then the game ended. I don't know if any of you who played this game felt the same way, but let me know in the comments. Maybe I'm just spoiled by the lengthy first game and didn't want this one to end. I'd give it an 8 out of 10. Good game, I enjoyed it more than the first one, and the progress the developers made really shows. Geralt is badass, love Triss, and I even learned how to mess up the bosses. If you think I'm simping for Triss, just wait for my review of The Wild Hunt. Oh my god.